Welcome back to Mission Control. That was a look at some of the training that Mike Hopkins has been doing as he got ready for his launch yesterday at 3.58 p.m. Central Time. We have with us today uh, Mark Gilliams, who is uh, one of uh, the Mark, one of Mike Hopkins' trainers and the lead uh, conditioning and strength specialist for, for us here at Johnson Space Center, right? Yes. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I think uh, Mark is going to be able to tell us a little bit about uh, what Mike has been doing and the importance of that in general. But why don't we start out um, by just talking about what what generally is required for astronaut training? Well, for astronaut training, what we we start about two years out from flight with these guys, and we just take them basically through physical conditioning. So it'll it'll go from everything from uh, just general running to weightlifting, getting their the body prepared for flight. If they're doing EVA, we'll do some special uh, training for getting them prepared for doing EVA. Um, and then other than that, it's just general overall fitness. So for people who, who don't know the lingo EVA, that's a spacewalk. What's, oh, what's some, of some of the things that might be specific, uh, specific to that? Well, with EVA, uh, one of the, the main, uh, because you're working against a pressurized suit, you have a lot of hand and forearm fatigue. So we'll do specific exercises that will work a lot of forearm and hand fatigue. So we try to strengthen those up to get them used to that fatigue factor. So you, you think about what the requirements are for anything that the astronauts might be doing and what they might need the strength to do, right? Yes, yes. Okay, well what generally, just for somebody going into space, what, what, what do they need to think about? Well, there's one of the there's a couple of things. Once you get to flight, it, zero g creates kind of a, the physiological changes that happen. We lose muscle. We lose not only muscle size, but we lose muscle strength. We, okay. we lose power, the, the, the ability to develop power. We lose cardiovascular conditioning, and then we also lose a lot of bone. So when they get those things, they need to be aware of, and most of them are highly aware of what happens in zero g. So when we put together our program here, we're training them here in 1G to prepare them for in-flight and the things that we need to do in-flight to mitigate those particular losses. So it's not necessarily, I guess, you know, zero gravity, you're not lifting heavy stuff. It's all pretty, pretty weightless, I guess. So it's not uh, that you need to be particularly strong for the work, but so that you can stay healthy yeah, in general. Yes, yeah. I mean, we're lifting, they're lifting, some of these guys are lifting pretty heavy loads, but I... So, but that's mainly just to counteract that stuff. It's, it has nothing to do with space flight. I mean, the ability to deadlift 450 pounds is not preparing them pretty much for something they're doing in space. It's actually conditioning the bones for the bone loss and muscle mass loss. Well, Mike Hopkins seems like he's probably a really good example of uh, fitness. Um, it seems, watching that video, it was pretty impressive what he can do. Yeah. Is that the norm or...? And I think this is maybe some uh, some other video of his training that we're he we're seeing here. Uh, looks like he's doing some weightlifting. Yeah, he's actually doing some squatting there. That's in that's our our gym there in Russia. Uh, so I can't tell how much loads on there, but it looks about 300 and some odd pounds. So yeah, he's getting pretty he's getting he's a pretty strong guy. <laughs> so I, I'm, are most astronauts able to do that, or is he the exception? Um, well, the the funny thing about zero g now. You think about it from a 1G perspective. He, if he's doing 300 pounds and he weighs 200 pounds in flight, that okay. now becomes 500 pounds because body weight's removed. So on certain exercises, we actually add back in the body weight. Okay. So to counter, because we lose it once we get there. So uh, for him, I mean, you know, for him to be able to squat 500 and something pounds in flight, probably is not, he's already doing that down here. So... So for most people, what it what it is very interesting is because you add that body weight back in, a lot of them aren't used to having that much load, particularly just on their back. They're sure. used to it being through the whole body. Okay, so I, is that something that I, I know the the equipment they use in space is called the ARED, the yes. Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, which is basically weightlifting type exercise, but yes. in zero gravity, right? Yes. Yeah, and it enables us to pretty much do anything we can do in a gym. So uh, we squat with it, we deadlift with it, those, which are our two main exercises for uh, maintaining bone and, and muscle strength. And uh, it can go up to about 600 pounds. So we can get a fairly good load out of it. Okay, so that should be able to, to mm -hmm. keep Mike uh, busy and, yeah, and it, yeah. keep it straining up. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't think that most of the astronauts are quite that advanced, though, right? Or is, uh, is that true? Or? No, I mean, all of them are trained up really well before they get up there. I mean, every astronaut we have, once they're assigned a flight, um, you know, they're squatting, they're deadlifting, they're doing those things in the gym prior to flight. So when they get up there, they're pretty much well prepared to do that. And it'll vary. I mean, yeah, I mean, Mike is the, is, is fairly strong. I would say he's probably one of the strongest astronauts we have pound for pound, but it's relative to any individual. Okay. I mean, if Mike is lifting 90% of his strength, you know, you would be lifting 90% of your strength. So it's relative to you. So okay. it's, and that's kind of how it's we design a program. It's all individually That's how we, de yes, yes, ma'am. We, we develop it off of, from an individual standpoint. So 90% is 90% regardless of whether it's you or me. So it's, it's still relative to us. Okay. Um, how, how far ahead do you start working on coming up with a plan for the astronauts when they're in orbit and uh, working with them on what they need to know? Well, uh, well, we start working with them as soon as they actually come to NASA. I mean, we've been working with been working with Mike since he's been here. But once he's assigned to a flight, then we're going to get more, much more general in what we're doing and try to be more, or excuse me, more specific to what we're doing okay. and related to flight. Um, and then, what was I'm sorry, I forgot the other. What was the other question about? Uh, just how how early do you start oh. working with them? It sounds like that's pretty early on. Yeah, it's pretty early. Yes, it's really early on. So it. it you know, we've had some crew members that we've started with, and you know, they could be in their mid 40s that have never really done a squat before. So we we have to take that into account when we start training them. So uh, with Mike, I mean, Mike played football in college. He's been he was doing squats for a long time. So it wasn't a lot of training with him. It was just more putting the program together and getting him to follow the program. Now, as far as the in-flight program goes. We pretty much have a set program that we use with every individual. And we'll tailor it a little bit and maybe change a few things depending on a strength or weakness within that particular crew member if we need to for in flight. Okay. Well, I know once they get up on orbit, they work out about two hours a day. Is that right? It's uh, They're scheduled two and a half hours two a and day. Half hours. And, that, and that will include uh, the resistive exercise portion as well as the aerobic portion. So... Um, and but that also includes they have to set up it's a little more overhead to get sure. ready to run on a treadmill than it is down here you just run in and push the button and go you you have to clean up set up there's you have harnesses you have to hook into and different types of things so it's it's just a little more overhead but that time includes all that stuff as well okay um, and then is that is there a requirement for before they go to flight how much they exercise a day or once they get back? Or? Well, there there is a minimum requirement of once they're scheduled, once they're assigned that we, they're, they're within their schedule, they're, pro, they're scheduled to come in twice a week, at least twice a week for two hours a day. We try to usually break that up and try to get it to at least four days or one hour a day. With Mike, for example, Mike, it didn't matter when it was in his schedule. His schedule is we work out at 6 o'clock in the morning, so he works out before work. So every morning prior to flight, five days a week, he and I are in the gym at 6 o'clock in the morning. So Okay. Yeah. And then when he gets back, will that will there be a set regime <coughs> regimen for him to follow there as yeah, well? Yes. Uh, once they return home for the next four, about six weeks roughly, they're two and a half hours a day, seven days a week, they're assigned to to us and we just go through reconditioning with them. And at that point, again, we, we pretty much have a set program that we use, but depending on how each individual crew member comes back a little different than the next crew member, depending on how space flight affects them. And that then um, tells us how fast we can progress into the next stage of training from a, from a post-flight perspective. Okay. Well, just one more question for you then. I think... Yeah. Um, okay. You know, one of the things that we've been talking about a lot with Mike Hopkins is the Train Like an Astronaut program mm -hmm. and, and talking to kids about the importance of fitness and nutrition. Um, I know, you know, in general, you have to be basically physically fit to be an astronaut, right? Would you, wh what would you encourage kids to do now if they were going to want to be an astronaut? Well, I think physical fitness, not even, just from a not even an astronaut standpoint, but just in general is extremely important. It, it, you know, when you talk about the obesity issues that we have in our country and you look at disease, just, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, all the things that we have that are very academ um, academic proportions in this country, then I think that exercise and physical fitness will definitely help those. So to me, 
you should always be moving. You should always be doing something. And it, it's going to help you in every aspect of your life. So. Okay. And I guess if you are interested in learning more about that, the Train Like an Astronaut program does have some uh, suggestions on some of the exercises you might be interested in trying out. And you can find out more about that by going to their Facebook site at facebook.com slash train astronaut. You can see that here on the bottom of your screen. And you can also keep up with uh, kind of their weekly workouts and fitness tips from Mike Hopkins and other astronauts at their Twitter site, which is twitter.com slash train astronaut. Thanks so much, Mark, for talking with us. We really appreciate okay, it. Thank you for having me.